Hello everybody, my name is Ratnos, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the trinkets from Nerubar Palace, the first raid of The War Within. Of course, these are very subject to change, but the Dungeon Journal is out. Abilities are actually out as well. I'm probably not going to make any video going through the abilities in this Dungeon Journal. We'll just take a look at these bosses once they become testable. But I do want to take a look at the trinkets, at least as they are presented right now at the start of Alpha. So up first, we have Olgrax the Devourer, the first boss. It drops Foul Behemoth's... Chelicera? Hang on. Uh, Calicera. Calicera, as I was saying, uh, which is either a pair of appendages in the front of the mouth in arachnids uh, and some other arthropods, usually modified as pincer-like claws. So these are like the little claws in the front of spider's mouths. Okay. Uh, anyways, this is an agi or strength trinket uh, that on use injects an enemy with digestive venom Dealing damage over 20 seconds. While active, your attacks and abilities against the target restore some health. That can't occur more than once every second. Overhealing from this effect permanently increases your max health by the same account amount, decaying rapidly upon leaving combat. And the on use here has a 1 minute 30 second cooldown. This is potentially very cool. So this is a trinket that uh, is only for tank specs, right? This is a tank, a tank spec trinket. Um, but... It gives you, so if this occurs, it can only occur once every every second for 20 seconds. But it could occur every second for 20 seconds. So you could, in theory, be picking up 220,000 max health if you're topped when you use this. And that could just last the rest of the encounter. And then you could use it again 90 seconds later. Imagine if there's a boss fight where the boss just kind of doesn't hurt too hard in P1 and P2. And you just get to farm some health. And you have a million extra health nine minutes into the fight when the boss starts owning you, like Sire Denathrius, for instance. Actually, Sire Denathrius isn't a great example because that boss just autoed you for your whole health bar, even in P2. But uh, there are some fights like that where just the end of the fight, the boss is hitting really hard uh, and getting some extra max HP would be potentially very powerful. How has somebody found me and flying? I literally flew over here instead of being on top of that on top of that building so nobody else would be here. And somebody literally flew into my, my little recording area here. That's That's wild. Oh yeah, cool tank trinket off of Olgrax. Up next is the Bloodbound Horror. This drops two trinkets. We have the Aberrant Spellforge. This is an intellect trinket that every 15 seconds you accumulate power from the Spellforge that empowers your next spec filler spell to deal additional shadow damage. So presumably this is stuff like Wrath or Fireball uh, is what I assume spec filler spells are. Uh, on use, you recklessly intensify the power of the Spellforge, increasing its damage by 25% until shortly after leaving combat. The Spellforge's power can be focused up to five times, and at full power, you gain haste for six seconds whenever it empowers your spec filler spell. Um, beware glimpses of dimensions better left unseen. So maybe there's some drawback to this as well. Uh, but if there's not, then we're looking at a trinket that says, okay, Every 15 seconds, you're getting this damage on your next filler spell. Presumably, you'll use that almost instantly. And then every minute, you are amping up that damage bonus by 25%. So again, if there's a fight where damage is only relevant in the last five minutes, which a lot of fights, damage in the last five minutes is a lot better than damage in the first five minutes. Uh, it depends on the encounter, but that's often true. Like, even Fire Act, the first two and a half minutes of that fight on progression were damage wasn't relevant, and farming some more damage for later in the fight was good. Um, but yeah, so that could be potentially pretty powerful. Uh, and then getting haste after the fifth minute of this every time, like you get haste every, for six seconds every 15 seconds. That's quite a high uptime on that as well. So uh, potentially a pretty powerful effect there. Up next is the creeping coagulum. This is an intellect trinket that on use feeds the coagulum, redirecting 20% of all healing done until it's consumed half a million healing. Once it's sated, the coagulum bursts to heal up to five injured allies for two hundred for a quarter million each, uh, increased per target. So, or okay, maybe not each. Healing up to five injured allies for a quarter million increased per target. So, yeah, I don't know how that splits. I don't know if that's split or what. Maybe it's the square root scaling thing. Lingering effluvia causes effective allies' next attacks to deal additional damage increased based on the overhealing done by the coagulum. So you press this button, you do a little bit less healing, right? You do 20% less healing for the next 500k healing that you... Actually, for the next 
two and a half million healing done, 20% is going into this coagulum, right? Uh, and then it will explode. It'll do some healing. All of the allies affected will do bonus damage on their next attack. And if it does overhealing, if it does entirely overhealing, they'll do even more damage. Interesting little healer trinket effect. My suspicion is that this is not it. Uh, this is not going to be that hot of a healer trinket. My suspicion is this one's going to be pretty pretty mid, but maybe it'll be good for damage if you can use it when it'll be full overhealing. That's uh, my first guess of maybe the most useful way to use this. Up next is Sikran, captain of the Surakai, Sur Shureki, Surakai. See, this isn't something that I can Google Translate or Google search to get the, def the uh, pronunciation of because it's a made-up World of Warcraft word instead of a real word. So Sureki, I don't know. Sikran's Shadow Arsenal is the trinket that drops from this boss. It's an Agi or a Strength trinket that says, uh, on use, assume a martial stance, or sorry, equip, assume a martial stance based on the last weapon drawn. On use, Serechian Flourish, draw dual swords from the arsenal to rend your target, dealing damage over six seconds, gain parry and avoidance until the next weapon is drawn. We don't see what the other weapons are here, but presumably this is going to be a bunch of different weapons, maybe three, maybe four, uh, that every time you use them, they'll do different little damage effects and also give you different minor trinkety benefits. So parry and avoidance, dodge and leech, speed and, you know, uh, speed and something. I don't know. Maybe a little bit of versatility or something like that, right? Like little small amounts of, of stats, right? Little damage proc, little heal over time, those kind of things. And then every minute you do an on use that does a bunch of damage of some kind, or uh, maybe they don't all do a bunch of damage, but probably they do. This is a trinket that is available only in melee DPS specs, not in tank specs. So I assume they're mostly just damage -y kind of effects. But uh, yeah, the old trinket reminiscent a little bit of like the uh, bag of weapons from Sepulchre. Although I guess it's a little bit different because you're not waiting to get a certain one. You just press this every minute and it flips what your weapon is and uses the uh, current one. Up next is Rashanan's trinket, which is the gigantic acid gland. This is a strength trinket that sprays your target with volatile acid, dealing damage every second for 20 seconds. Your abilities intensify the acid's damage by an additional, the, the same amount that it does by default, per second, for the remaining duration, and splash up to five nearby enemies for nature damage per stack. Now this doesn't specify an ICD on it, but it does say that your abilities do this. So uh, if there's not a way to cheese this, like imagine if you I-beam, I guess I-Beam isn't something that a strength user could have, but imagine if you Blade Storm or Whirlwind and you do multiple damage instances and that triggers this multiple times, that could potentially be quite powerful if it works like that. Uh, if it was just one per use, uh, then instead we're just looking at something that would deal what? Uh, 44,000 average over 20 seconds if you did something one second every one second, which uh, some strength classes, actually I think all strength classes are on a hasted GCD, not on a one second GCD, but let's assume you could do it every one second. Uh, then we would be looking at uh, 800,000, 900,000 or so damage on the on use part. This is on the champion track as well. So of course it'll be higher at higher eye level versions of this. Uh, and also splashing damage to nearby enemies as well, although a pretty small amount there. So yeah, uh, it's a two minute cooldown. So I don't know, it remains to be seen how powerful that's going to end up being. Okay, Egg Tender Avinax is next. We have the Gruesome Syringe. This is an int trinket that, on use, applies a dark miasma to your ally target and lets the science begin, absorbing the next 1.2 million healing received from you for up to 10 seconds. Complete the experiment by removing the absorb before it expires. Success grants you and your ally versatility and a shield absorbing damage over time. Uh, for 20 seconds, additional side effects will occur. Okay, so <laughs> you put a healing absorb on somebody, but it only absorbs your healing. So you're not going to grief them from their own health pot healing them. Uh, but then you need to deal that 1.2 million healing to them over 10 seconds. So this is going to be something that like Resser Druids with a life bloom and something on somebody might be, uh, or Mistweavers, of course, with an enveloping mist uh, will be pretty happy about. Uh, but all healing specs have some way of bombing some healing into somebody uh, to make this explode. Uh, and then you get a bunch of verse for you and them, and a shield 
uh, for a bunch of damage as well. So you could use this potentially to prep for a one shot on you and another squishy member in your group in M plus, for instance. Uh, additional side effects will occur. We'll have to see what those are. Avanax's Mercurial Egg is the other trinket from this one. No primary stat, no secondary stat, but you equip and you carefully balance the egg's incubation. While stationary, you gain intellect primary stat. Uh, let's just check here. It is also on Feral and Guardian, so presumably this is just any primary stat. Uh, you'll gain that primary stat every second up to 30 times, which diminishes while moving. While moving, you gain... 122 of your highest secondary stat every second, up to 30 times, diminishes while stationary. Additional stacks above 20 grant 60% reduced benefit, and on use, you suspend the egg's incubation state for 20 seconds uh, on a two-minute cooldown. So this is a neat little minigame, right? Let's, let's break down what this is offering you. You could get 115 times 20, right? Plus 115 times, like, 2.5... Uh, for those last 10 stacks, but most of the value you're getting is from the first 20 stacks of stationary, or you can have 122 times 20 plus a little bit more if you go all the way up to 30 stacks uh, of your secondary stat if you're moving the whole time. Of course, if you're moving the whole time, you know, as a caster, that's going to cost you something to, to do, but if you're a melee DPS, it would be pretty easy to either be moving or stationary however much you want. And presumably what you're going to want is you're going to want 20 stacks of primary stat and then 10 stacks of secondary stat. And that's going to mean that you've been moving for 10 of the last 30 seconds and stationary for 20 of the last 30 seconds. But if you have that and then you want to stand still for 10 seconds uh, and use all your cooldowns, or if you need to move, you can on use suspend the incubation state and lock it in at a good rate. And maybe 2010 is unrealistic. Maybe you're going to get something like 1812, 1515, anything where you're not over 20. Because once you're over 20, you're only getting 60%, or you're only getting 40% value from each of those stacks. Um, neat little effect. Potentially something that's bad for the brain globals. Uh, certainly something that might happen. But I suspect that a lot of mythic boss fights, if you're a caster, you know, you're going to have something like a two to one ratio of being still and moving on a lot of hard boss fights anyways, right? Uh, that's probably a pretty natural thing. If you're a melee DPS, you might need to unlearn the AD, AD, AD thing that, that melees do um, so that you actually can spend enough time stationary to ramp up the primary stat, especially because that's probably going to be better than the secondary stat. But um, yeah, neat effect. Pretty cool one. Might be annoying to use, but it's neat conceptually. I like it. Up next is Nexus Princess Kyvex Kyveza. This one has the Marfen Malfunctioning Cartel Communicator. This is a haste trinket. It says your spells and abilities have a very high chance to power the communicator and receive a snippet of cryptic instructions from somewhere in the beyond. Connect, collecting 10 snippets deciphers them to reveal your next task. It's probably nothing, so complete it to gain a bunch of primary stat for 15 seconds. So the question here is what your next task might be. Like, is this going to put a marker on the ground and be like, oh, go, go walk here? Or is it going to be like, hey deal a million damage, you know, do a million healing, uh, stand still for five seconds, you know, what kind of things are the tasks going to be? Is it just going to auto-complete, right? Is it just going to be like, hey, it is, you know, nothing or whatever, you just complete this? Um, I don't know. That is that is the mystery, but that's a lot of primary stat that it gives you for 15 seconds. So if you line this thing up with your cooldowns, that's probably really good. That's, uh, that's probably a pretty exciting trinket there. Void Reaper's Chime is an Agi trinket that says, your abilities have a high chance to summon a phantom ethereal, dealing shadow damage to your target and also to all other enemies, less shadow damage to all other enemies caught in its path. If the target is below 35% health, this effect summons two additional phantoms at 25% effectiveness, so it deals 50% more damage if the target is below 35% health. And if you have this two set, uh, then you also... Uh, Void Reaver's Chime always summons additional phantoms against enemies affected by Queen's Bane. Queen's Bane presumably comes from that Warp Blade, uh, which is here, this very rare trinket from the Nexus Princess, uh, that says your attacks have a chance. This is a, a fist weapon, an agi fist weapon, with crit strike only, no other secondary, but your attacks have a high chance to deal a shadow dot over 10 seconds. So if you have that, then you get this benefit regardless of execute. Is that really everything that this boss drops? 
Yeah, it looks like it only drops the communicator, the chime, and the warp blade for now. Wait, that can't be right. Surely it's just only trinkets are implemented right now. Only trinkets and very rares are implemented right now, I imagine. Okay. Wow, is this the only very rare in the raid as well? It looks like maybe it is. Unless maybe just something has... No, okay, it looks like that's just all that's implemented right now. Okay, uh, cool. So there's at least, that's the one very rare that's in so far, is the uh, Void Weaver's Warp Blade. Also looks like it's only one eye level jump over the non-very rares in this slot. Interesting little effect there is uh, the smaller jump. Cool. I wouldn't read too much into that. There's a chance it'll work that way. There's a chance it won't. I wouldn't read too much into, uh, into these kind of eye level things on Alpha. Up next is the Silken Court. This one has Spy Master's Web which is a mastery trinket. Uh, and this one says your damaging spells dispatch a small spider to spy on your foes, which increases your intellect by 69 per report received, stacking up to 40 times. This effect may only occur every six seconds. On use, you can instead gain uh, almost 10 times the intellect per report for 20 seconds, consuming the passive effect. Uh, so potentially this is something where you actually would maybe hold this for a while in the encounter, building up uh, 40 sacks of this. And then when you use your CDs during Lust at the end of the fight, you pop this and get an absolute boatload of intellect, uh, depending on, you know, what's best here. Depending on the fight, right? Uh, Swarm Lord's Authority is up next. This is an add to your strength trinket that says, Summon a Scarab every 20 seconds that retrieves a fortifying chunk of flesh from your target. Scarabs deal physical damage and reduce your damage taken by 50% until a small amount of damage has been prevented. So they give you a little ignore pain, basically, uh, when they proc. These also do automatically every 20 seconds, right? It's every 20 seconds you get one of these scarabs rather than like a chance to proc. So it's somewhat predictable as well. On use, you can send your swarm into a frenzy, which summons 12 scarabs over 3 seconds to ravage your foes, uh, which deals a medium amount of damage, but notably will give you a large ignore pain. Uh, that will give you an ignore pain for uh, almost half a mil on this champion one out of eight item, which, yeah, presumably, again, you can see just you can see here how the eye levels are fake, right? See how this drops at champion four out of eight, this drops at champion one out of eight on the dungeon journal. Just don't read too much into it. That is, uh, this one will almost certainly drop at champion four out of eight uh, if it stays to be from this boss. Okay, last is Queen Anserek, who drops the Abyssal Effigy. This trinket has whatever primary stat you use. On use, Abyssal Hunger builds within you every 60 seconds, growing in strength up to three times. We don't know what Abyssal Hunger actually does as a passive effect, uh, or if it even has a passive effect, but we do know that on use, you give in to your darkest impulses, unleashing Umbral Fury, Froth and Gluttony, or Abyssal Detonation based on your accumulated hunger. Who knows what these effects are, but hopefully they are cool and different and it's not just... I do 100,000 damage, I do 200,000 damage, I do 300,000 damage. That would be pretty boring. Uh, but hopefully these are kind of neat little different effects. And yeah, it's a one-minute cooldown. But of course, if you wanted to use Abyssal Detonation, it would effectively be a three-minute cooldown if that's uh, something that requires three stacks. Don't know what happens if you try to use this thing when you have zero stacks. I guess that's going to be impossible to do because it'll be you'll have a stack by the time it's off CD. Maybe you could use it right at the start of the fight and have zero stacks. Maybe you start with three stacks. I don't know. These are the mysteries. This is a very mysterious trinket, but it is from the last boss. So historically, when they don't goof too badly, that's, it tends to be pretty powerful trinkets from the last boss because they usually like making last boss trinkets uh, pushed, right? They like giving them a little bit of extra power so that you use them because uh, they're usually pretty flavorful, pretty... They end up being pretty strong. So we'll see what this ends up doing. Uh, hopefully it's cool. Hopefully it's not too... Hopefully it's not too powerful, but hopefully it is powerful and interesting. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've enjoyed this little look at the trinkets and I guess the very rare item uh, from the Narabar Palace so far in Alpha. Again, I said this like four times, but early days, don't panic too much about anything in here. Don't read too much into any specific number, anything like that. Uh, those are all highly fluid. Uh, more just a, getting a base idea of what we're looking at uh, in the upcoming raid. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.